know how much drama I've been in over my opinions on the subject? My goodness. Oh, considering how much time you spend, I can only imagine. I think you get into so much trouble, and I still, to this day, and this is, I've told you, I don't see what the issue is. You never come off mean. You never come off hostile. Um, I don't I don't understand why. It's like they just cannot grasp that you might not say something they agree with. Like, uh, well, I, I try not to. I've, I've definitely had a few moments. Um, the uh, My initial Twitch ban was actually a product of me uh, not being able to contain my rage at the uh, the injustice uh, inflicted on the Palestinian people by Israel. So we've been been moderating the um, the tone with which I discuss this issue a little yeah. bit as time has gone on. Yeah, have you? But well, we we got demonetized not that long ago, um, which was kind of sad for us because it wasn't like we were making big money, but we were at least able to have something. I'm and sorry. so I, I'm yeah, no, it, this is what happened. But um, this is always one of those issues that is very, you know, the let's just say the what do you call it? the algorithm is not friendly to us. Um, it does not like the subject matter and how we cover things. And but I recall. You did something that was very impressive to me a while back, um, which was when you did like a huge fundraiser for Palestinian um, children. And I always was, I was very, very impressed with what, both your ability to raise that kind of money by playing video games for nonstop, however long that was, but just that this is your take. And I'm curious where you came to that. Cause like, I, I mean, I'm tribe, so I was raised very Zionist um, and it's taken me a while to get to where I am. But so I'm kind of curious, like where you came to this is obviously important to you. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I actually, um, I grew up in Beverly Hills. You know, that's my, my proletarian origin story. Uh, Beverly Hills, of course, is full of um, Persian Jews, um, but they're, they're not the hyper Zionist kind of Jew. For the most part, because they're Persian Jews, um, they, uh, you know, a lot of them came over after the um, the Iranian Revolution, and as a consequence of that, there's like a very slight cultural shift that's evident, I think, in issues relating to Israel. Most of the Jewish kids that I grew up with was because, like, my higher friend circle, like everyone I knew, basically, um, Israel just didn't come up that much. Not just because you only talk politics so much when you're a kid, but also because it to a lot of them it seemed like this kind of like tangential thing like this side issue like oh you know maybe it's fine maybe it's not there were only a couple of people who i remember being sort of obnoxiously zionist while i was growing up but i think um since most of the friends that i had at the time had left-leaning inclinations i think i just never really got a positive spin on israel like ever growing up like it was always neutral or negative and then you get older and you learn more about history and then it just gets more and more negative um but I, I never really had that like initial sort of um, tainting of the well. Yeah, that's it. You know, my husband grew up in Southern California. He's from um, Hidden Hills and um, Jewish family. And yet they were he wasn't raised like I was raised here. And even among the Jewish population, and that's Ashkenazi Jews even. But um, yeah, like Persian Jews, I think, are they considered Sephardic Jews? Are they Mizrahi Jews? What kind of Jews are those? They like big white pillars. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, no, but it's interesting because a lot of people don't realize that in Israel, um, while people think it's about Jews, it's only about certain Jews. It's about white Ashkenazi Jews because the way they treat the Sephardic Jews and the Mizrahi Jews is terrible. Um, so, and it's always been the case. So, yeah, it's, it's a, a very colorist regime. Yeah. Thing. yeah. So, talk a little bit about um, like when you realized how bad this is. Well, a lot of it was this sort of incidental engagement with politics online, not like a big reckoning in real life. But um, I, I guess one of the things that really bothered me or that really weirded me out was there was a sort of incongruence between the progressive rhetoric that we employ in basically all situations of racial segregation and apartheid and the way stuff regarding Israel seemed to be treated. A lot of it was like the disconnect between what seems to be an almost universally held position in America. Um, over the past decade or so, I mean, even before that, but it's like suspicion of war on terror rhetoric, right? Like yeah. the, and any like, you know, in order to protect the freedom of our people, we must do this security, this security, that like people on the left in America are very suspicious of that rhetoric for good reason. You know, uh, we remember the Patriot Art Act. We remember what was done in the name of that rhetoric. And then you hear a, a ton, just a ton of it, like the mainstay of it coming from Israel and all of the sacrifices and all of the, uh, a, a sort of political posturing done 
with indistinguishable rhetoric. So I think I saw that and like it was pretty clear there was a double standard going on. Um, going online, of course, is a really, really, really bad way to learn about anti-Zionism because a lot of anti-Zionists are also anti-Semites and the two like yes. get conflated really easily. So yeah. it was difficult, I guess, trying to find the right like carved out space where you had principled critiques of Zionism that wasn't just people like pretending that APAC controls the US government or something. Right. No, there it's it's very nuanced. And depending on what your demographic is, it depends on where you're allowed to go with the conversation almost, like where it's safe to talk about the conversation. And and I mean, I've been being called out by a lot of my fellow tribesmen for my position on this is, you know, and everybody, of course, is very wanting to take sides. Everybody loves sides. They have to have teams. Everybody wants teams. And um, I think that really what it comes down to is I feel like I know their sort of inside propaganda tricks and how they phrase things and how they say things, because now I see it very clearly how I was brainwashed by a lot of this. Um, but I think it's so important to disconnect Zionism from Judaism. This whole, th what, what is going on in Israel to me is one of the biggest causes of anti-Semitism that we have going on right now because this complete conflation of Judaism and Zionism, and they are not the same thing. And I think that that is something that I spend a lot of time trying to do is deconstruct that concept because um, there are more and more Jews that are waking up, especially in this country, that are not happy with what's being done in our name. Yeah, the the association between um, Semitism and Zionism is really, really destructive for Jewish people, I think, largely because, A, it implicitly um, sort, it sort of implicates Jewish people in the crimes of the government of Israel, which is obviously not good, you know, reputationally. Obviously, like, it's not as though um, Arabs in the Middle East were super cool with Jews, like, historically, but things have only been made worse recently. And a lot of that is because Israel is, like, a, you know, a geopolitical, like, firecracker that's been thrown in the region. A lot of that gets displaced, and because Israel is always screaming that they are representative of all Jews, you get that back and forth. And obviously, like, throughout history, every time you see, like, a merger of state and religion, things get really bad really quickly. We're seeing it uh, in, in India with Hindu nationalism, where you have this like synthesis between Hinduism as a cultural uh, force and like the power of Modi's government. We see this in America right now with Christian nationalism being one of the preferred yeah. dog whistles for like modern day American fascism. It's just not good. Wherever this happens, it's just not good. It's just not, <laughs> it's not good politics, you know? Right. I'm not a fan of a theocracy or an ethnostate. I'm just not. I've come to the big epiphany, which I can't believe I didn't come to it a lot sooner, that in order to have an ethnostate, you have to commit an ethno cleanse. And those two things go together. And, in, and, and that is something that is like, and so, and I have since realized that I participated in ethnic cleansing when I was in fact over in Israel on a trip with Alexander Mus High School in Israel, which is also partially under the JNF, um, Jewish National Fund for people who don't know. And I now know that places where I was planting trees uh, were not really meant for us to be. And well, I now know that I was used as a tool of ethnic cleansing. Well, to be fair, um, if, uh, if everyone who got brought along on birthright was, um, you know, march to uh, uh, Nuremberg for for war crime tribunals. Uh, that'd be a lot of people. That'd be I know, and life. this was before. I, this was before birthright, right? So, like, I actually haven't done birthright. The name of it actually makes my skin crawl now. I find it so unbelievable. The caucasity of it, like, that's what I sit here and think. The absolute caucasity. Your birthright. Like, how obnoxious can somebody be? Um, and now my and I have a son who wants to do it, but in his mind, it's just free trip to Israel. He's very practical. He has no, he doesn't care one way or the other about the politics, which is sad in and of itself. And so now I've just started calling it clan camp. Oh, um, no, I, I had friends who were like that. Him. Yeah. Be because it is a free trip, right? So like a lot of them, yes. I, 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 had, I had friends who were like that and they were like, you know, yeah, I went over there and there were a bunch of dudes who were trying to explain to me how like, this is my homeland and my birthright. And look at this culture, look at this history. We belong here. And I was just like, yeah, okay, cool. Where's the restaurants? And they just took like, <laughs> they just they just went <laughs> yeah. over there, had some burgers and came back, which, you know, at, at that point, it's just travel on the Israeli government's dime. And that's as... As projects go, there are worse ones than that. I suppose. I just look at it as like brainwashing camp. And yeah, some people are resilient and are formed. Like when I was in Israel, I was 16. So I'd like to think that if I went when I was 23, I might have had a different perspective. Although I don't know. You know, I don't know. We were much more malleable. Um, and so they like that more. You know, they, they'd rather get you there younger. 
I um, think that's I th what they can work in. I think more ethno nationalists should do this. I think that white nationalists should have birthright, except it takes all European people to Kansas. And they have they like free trips to Kansas and they're like, look at our culture. And they're like gesturing out at a cornfield or something. They're like, here, stay, make white children. Never, so everyone just basically you think we should like basically colonize Kansas with all the white folk. That's kind of mean to Kansas. Don't they have indigenous people there? I mean, I would think that's kind of mean to do that. To How Kansas. about OK, what about Minnesota? How about South Dakota? No, wait, they definitely. No, I think Wyoming is where you got to go. First of all, that's the only state that I did not get a donation from when I ran for Congress. So there's mm. that. And also and I think it's a Dick Cheney thing. I just I have this thing and Wyoming's beautiful. It really is. But don't I, you like Liz Cheney? No, I do not care for Liz Cheney. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.